Hi, everybody. It is June 10, 2019. I want to pass on some information regarding the Oroville Dam, and I'm going to start with playing just a few minutes of this interview with this woman on the left, a Department of Water Resource spokeswoman talking about the Oroville Dam, Lake Oroville, and listen to what she has to say. And I think people get confused. It's a very complicated subject, water management. Lake Oroville is part of the state's water system, correct? We are the beginning of the state water project. The this is the head of it. The beginning. And we're getting rain, and people are seeing water that is, how do you put it, let out of Lake Oroville? Correct. Why is that happening, and can you explain? The Lake Oroville is a working reservoir. It is built to fill and lower, fill and lower, go up and down, up and down, up and down. So the water that we store, we're storing from the rain inflow or snow melt inflow into Lake Reservoir, nearly 4,000 miles of watershed in the Sierra Nevadas. That's a lot. So when that water, rain, snow begins to melt, fill up Lake Oroville, if we have a lot of snow or heavy rainstorms coming, we have to save that top 50 feet of the reservoir to capture that. If we don't, then we would be in a major flood event. So this, over the past couple of weeks, we had a series of storms that we were letting water out for flood control to keep that top 50 feet empty for flood control. So we started letting water out down the spillway. Pe Did you hear that? Should I play it again? What this woman is saying, we have to keep the levels of Lake Oroville at, well, she says earlier, 855, 855 feet. We have to keep it there to accommodate the snowmelt, the rains that come in. Otherwise, otherwise, the dam will overtop and we could have a major flood. That's what she's saying, 855. And where is the level now? 893. She's saying we have to keep that 50 feet to capture all of the snow melt. And you don't have that 50 feet. You haven't had that 50 feet for a long time. But here, warming weather to increase Sahara snow melt, flooding risk. Forecasters say warming California weather will increase melting of the huge Sahara Nevada snowpack and raise water levels in many rivers and streams in, streams in the coming week. National Weather Service says this will heighten the risk of flooding in adjacent areas, including along the upper Mertz River in Yosemite National Park. Forecasters say nearby residents, hikers, campers, you need to pay close attention to water levels uh, to be ready, be ready to move to safety. Experts warn that the rivers pose life-threatening dangers this time of year, running swift and so cold that, well, you're at risk of hypothermia if you're in it. Uh, state officials said Friday there is potential use of the reconstructed spillway at Orville Dam. Ah, and that spillway crumbled during heavy flows in 2017. Weeks after this interview, Oroville Dam crumbles. And this dam was at 855 feet. It's now at 893. But I want to point out, uh, let me refresh here just to see if there's more. All right. So I think it got to 895. Um, that was sometime last week. Then it started to drop, 894. Now it's at 893. But you had rain. So where is this drop coming from? I don't know. But I find it very interesting that, well, let me, ah, I shouldn't have refreshed. OK. You had an inflow into the lake at 10 o'clock last night, and it was 6,000, um, over 6,000. But at 11 o'clock, you have 13,000. What happened? 
what happened? That uh, you had nearly doubled the inflow when the outflow was consistent. Consistent. Now you can go on the site and you can go back and look at the data. It was consistent. Where did this inflow come from? So it drops again. It, it drops nearly in half um, an hour, hour later, and then it's 4,000 less an hour later, and then it jumps up an hour later, and then it's in between 6, 7, and 8. And then you have consistent inflow. What happened? All right. I need to interject here. Man has technology. Electromagnetic frequencies can be used to evaporate water. And with all of the questions regarding the dam in Oroville, with many people questioning the Department of Water Resources, again, I'm going to say it, I would find it very, very surprising if this dam overtops. Um, because there, it, there's been way too much attention brought to it. That's not to say that I believe that the dam will continue to operate as it's supposed to operate. I do believe that they're going to bring down that dam. I would find it very surprising if they do it now, since there is so much attention. Yes, they have electromagnetic frequencies that can fill up reservoirs or drain reservoirs. We don't know what is going to be taking place. We know that the Department of Water Resources is lying. The dam has many, many problems. Many problems. And, you know, here, they're, this is the Department of Water Resources site. They have a blog. On May 31, they said, due to forecasted inflows into Lake Oroville, Department of Water Resource is preparing for the potential use of Oroville's main spillway next week because of the above normal precipitation in May. Well, that didn't occur. And many have speculated it's not occurring because the spillway, it will collapse. So here's another more recent blog, June 7, due to late precipitation and based on inflows, Department of Water Resource has taken steps to prepare for potential use of the spillway. The current outflows from Hyatt Power Plant are approximately matching inflows. However, what happened here? All right. Can we trust this data? Absolutely not. No, we can't. Just because it's a government site, it does not mean that it's accurate. I wish people would grow up and understand that their authority figures are not mommy and daddy, that they are just like you. They're just adults doing their job, and many lie doing their job. And adults should not be relying on mainstream media or authority figures to uh, let uh, to think for them. Adults should be these individuals who think for themselves. And if they find that there's a lot of inconsistent information coming out about something so serious, well, an adult who's mature would then say, okay, I've got to look into this because nothing is making sense. We don't have that. We, we have very few people who are mature. So we've got a lot of people who are just relying on that 
authority figure, but those who don't, they're the ones who question. And they brought a lot of attention to this dam. Um, but at this point, again, I, I, I have everything that I, we're living now a time where everything has radically changed, even our fellow Americans. So we have to understand that we've got the technology that, yeah, they can reduce the level of the lake via electromagnetic frequencies. They can pull the, the water, literally. They can pull humidity from lakes, they can pull water from lakes, electromagnetic frequencies, scalar technology, look into it. Um, so they could do that for a period of time. And then when the attention drops off, they could collapse it then. But considering the condition of the majority of Americans, you know, I said it would be surprising if they let it over top now. But <laughs> I have to say it wouldn't be surprising because so many are just completely incapable of doing anything, holding anybody responsible, thinking for themselves, um, empty kind of just empty Americans, just that's what we're surrounded by. No substance, just kind of robots letting mainstream media authority figures think for themselves. That's the real danger zone for all of us. I'd like to understand this inflow. Um, so if the Department of uh, Re Water Resources determines that they're going to open up the main spillway. They will let media and you guys know. But they're also uh, reopening public access to the top of the dam this summer in anticipation of the public opening. The crews will begin work on June 11 to remove small panels from the dam crest roadside barriers that contain asbestos. This work expected to last for two weeks and they will be wearing uh, protective clothing, uh, clothing and respirators to clean that asbestos. So um, what's happening? We don't know. That's what lying does. It leaves you where you, you th there's nothing solid that you can hang your hat on. What is solid is information coming from Scott Cahill um, and go to Scott Cahill's channel. He is an expert, not an engineer, but he has a construction company. He constructs dams. He knows what he's talking about. And he is someone who has the expertise the experience, the knowledge to speak on this subject. And he has been very forthright. Um, and what he is saying is uh, very different from what the Department of Water Resources is telling you guys out in the Oroville area. So when that inconsistency occurs, when you've got that juxtaposition, that's when the individual has to uh, spend a little bit of time to find out what's happening. Just looking at the Delhi Reservoir levels, here, the Feather River, Oroville, 97 percent, Antelope, 102, Frenchman, 101, and Lake Davis, 97 percent capacity. The Feather River, with that snowmelt coming down, well, it is going to fill those reservoirs. And there's no 
There's no room left for this snow melt. No room left. If it doesn't overtop, my hunch, they have used the technology to pull water from that lake. Now that sounds crazy. It's only sounding crazy because you have not done the research on the technology that man has and is using today. You've not done the research on scalar technology, electromagnetic frequencies, and what it can do. All right, I want to play some of uh, Susan Moldings or the entire video actually because it's very very important and title Oroville Dam update June 10 posted on June 9 but with June 10 updates I'm trying to save your lives this is new she has a lot of information in her well not in this description box sorry um, but this is uh, proof of problems at the Oroville Dam and why you should move from under the dam. This is information from the dam experts, inspectors, and builder, builders of dams, Scott Cahill, Scott Cahill, Paul Preston, Robert Bia, and Johnson, and others. So, um, many people would say, oh God, what a dramatic title. It's not. It's a courageous title. There are a lot of problems. And you are being lied to by your Department of Water Resources. You know, what's funny, too, is, you know, and I've asked Americans, you know, who, who will say, the TV told me, um, and I'll say, so you believe everything that you hear on TV? And they say no, but they continually say the TV told them. Like, they believe it, but they don't believe it, and they're so screwed up, they don't even know what they're about. Um, what what they are about is that they've lost their ability to think for themselves and so they just allow other people to think for them we've got a lot of Americans just like that you cannot rely on your authority figures and funny because it's common knowledge Americans don't believe they're government officials but they rely on their government officials that's a bizarre condition to be in but they know that the American people are in that condition and when you're in that condition when you're believing liars over and over and over again then they just know they can do anything you, you render yourself incredibly vulnerable to those who lie to those who want to take advantage to those who have an agenda. Please pull yourself up out. And I'm not talking about you guys. I know that you guys are not in that condition. But I am talking about the Americans who may just happen upon this video. Who knows? You got to think for yourself.
leakage under the wear, cracked and sinking gatehouse, gate, uh, gates out of alignment, spalling occurring on spillway, clogged drainage system, water seeping through dam face, cracked clay fin inside dam face, high power plant leaks when water rises, when water rises, one turbine out at higher high power plant, leakage under spillway again, lake level too high with no room for runoff. And you're at 893 according to this site. Um, it could be higher. What happened here? You've got this warming weather now. That snow melt coming down. And you heard it right here from this uh, Department of Water Resource spokeswoman. You heard her say. Do people get confused? It's a very complicated subject, water management. Lake Orville is part of the state's water system. We are the beginning of the state water project. This is the head of it. The beginning. And we're getting rain and people are seeing water that is, how do you put it, let out of Lake Oroville? Correct. Why is that happening and can you explain? The Lake Oroville is a working reservoir. It is built to fill and lower, fill and lower, go up and down, up and down, up and down. So the water that we store, we're storing from the rain inflow or snow melt inflow into Lake Reservoir, nearly 4,000 miles of watershed in the Sierra Nevadas. That's a lot. So when that water, rain, snow begins to melt, fill up Lake Oroville, if we have a lot of snow or heavy rainstorms coming, we have to save that top 50 feet of the reservoir to capture that. If we don't, then we would be in a major flood event. So Then we would be in a major flood event. You don't have that 50 feet. The snow melt is coming. Regardless or irrespective of all of the other problems, the fact that the lake level is so high, you don't have that 50 feet, you only have less than 10 feet. You have what? It's 893, so you have about 8 feet left. Not 58 feet, and that snow melt is coming. And people actually think you're crazy for asking questions about this. All right, all links are below. Stay safe, everybody.